Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me for this week's episode of Real World Basics. Today we are going to be talking about keeping up with your home. So now that you have your own place, you are now in charge of keeping up with it. So today's video will go over the basics of keeping up with your new place and what to do when things go wrong. Now today's video is aimed at those who do not own their own space and are renting or leasing. If you own your own space, then there are still some aspects of this video that uh, that might be helpful to you, um, but you will need to know that you are the person responsible for all aspects of the home um, as a uh, homeowner. Uh, you don't have a landlord to rely on. So the first thing to do in keeping up with your home is to keep it clean. So this means keeping uh, you, your uh, belongings, your physical space, all of that in good, clean order. In the description box, I've linked to some past real world basics videos um, in subjects that uh, could be helpful in keeping things clean, like uh, making your own cleaning products, doing laundry, things like that. Um, but keeping your place clean is, a personal maturity milestone, in my opinion, because it's just a marker of respect for yourself. Um, you show this respect towards yourself, your belongings, and you even extend it towards uh, visitors to your space. Now, another good reason to keep your place clean are bugs and mold. Critters like ants, roaches, flies, all of these critters are attracted to dirty spaces. And while I personally appreciate them doing their thing outside, supporting the environment and the local ecosystem, I prefer them to stay outside. So keeping areas um, like your bathroom, your kitchen, anywhere you eat clean are key in avoiding bugs and mold. But however, sometimes despite your best efforts, bugs and mold can still occur. And if you're confident that the reason they're there is outside of your control, like if there's like a, a hole in the wall that they're coming in through, or maybe there's like a leak in your shower, there, there's nothing you can do to fix that. So that's when you have to bring in outside help. So the first thing you need to do when it's outside of your control is to consult your lease. So when you get your lease, when you first move in, detailed inside of it should be all of the things that you are responsible for and all of the things that your landlord is responsible for. So you first want to check out and see what are you responsible for. This is usually um, uh, smaller regular maintenance activities and your lease will outline what you're expected to keep up with. Um, so small things like this are usually changing light bulbs when they go out, uh, usually air filters, um, maybe if you like rent a house or something, you're responsible for keeping up with the yard, not letting it get overgrown or something like that. Um, but for anything else, consider what you can do before you reach out to your landlord. Uh, partially because, unfortunately, they are not always responsive. Um, so when you think about what can I do, think if maybe your shower is backing up or it's draining really slow, uh, you could try using Drano or like trying to plunge it if that seems like it might help or if you have bugs, get some traps because the first thing that your landlord is probably going to do is to tell you to do that anyways. So that way you can tell them I've already got a head start. It either is or isn't helping. So you're already one step ahead of them. Then if other stuff goes wrong, know that if it's outside of your abilities, then probably don't mess with it. Uh, you might end up making it worse. So that is when you contact your landlord as soon as possible. So when you notify your landlord as soon as an issue is identified, you want to do it in writing. So this brings us over to things you need to know. You want to keep a uh, 
ongoing record of documented communication with your landlord in writing regarding issues. This could be through text, email, etc. Because even if an issue doesn't personally bother you, you are still responsible for notifying the property owner. So while this issue could just be simple and straightforward, like an aesthetic issue, like a hole in the wall, but it could also be a catalyst in a larger chain of events. Like I said earlier, if there was a, um, like a crack in your shower and it was leaking water, there's nothing you can do about it, but you still have to tell them because that can cause a lot of water damage. And having this documented record of contact with your landlord is crucial in case they try to do something unethical, like claim you owe them money out of your security deposit um, because of an issue. And they'll do that even if they never responded uh, to your uh, communication or fixed the problem. So always keep a record of communication. You also want to know where things are. Um, this will kind of go back to the what can you do before you call them and sometimes you have to do something before you can call them. If your toilet is overflowing, knowing where the water shutoff valve is on the toilets and how to turn it off can be a like a lifesaver and it'll save your stuff, uh, maybe help prevent a whole bunch of water damage. So doing things like that, knowing where that is, knowing where the breaker box is in case you trip a circuit or you have to go flip a switch. Um, those are all really helpful things to know because you never want to try and find a breaker box after the power's already gone out. Then you also want to know who to call for emergency maintenance. Uh, who do you call for after hours? Maybe in your lease there is a specific number to call for when you get locked out. So knowing all of those things ahead of time, even if you just know where to look for it, you know there's a specific thing for it that can help jumpstart you and help get you on the right path to getting your issue fixed. Now you do need to understand that when stuff goes wrong, it does sometimes take time to complete uh, uh, or get it all fixed up. So sometimes if it's like a big problem, uh, like a structural problem, they have to coordinate with contractors, that can take a while. Um, waiting on plumbers or electricians, they give you a big time window and it can take a, it, it can take a while and it's frustrating, but it's to be expected. It kind of just is what it is. Um, and if the issue you're reporting is purely aesthetic and doesn't impact the function or safety of the, uh, the unit, then you may just be stuck with an ugly hole in the wall or mis mismatched blinds. However, when the issue does impact the uh, habitability of a space, then there are legal timelines where the issue needs to be fixed because a lease goes both ways. So both you and the landlord have obligations to each other with regards to taking care of the space. So you are have an obligation to take care of the space while you're there. And they have an obligation to provide you with a safe space to live in. So you need to learn what um, your state's specific tenant rights and responsibilities are. And uh, that way, if you ever find yourself in a situation um, where you no longer feel like it's like a safe and habitable place to live in, you know the steps you can take to uh, correct that. Um, that way you can uh, contact like the housing agency in your place of residency or seek legal support. So I've included a link to the state of Virginia's Department of Housing and Community Development, um, their tenant and landlord resources webpage where there are a number of resources available. So with that in mind, you kind of go back to keeping a documented log of uh, communication between both parties for uh, future consultation if needed. And just a final note for keeping up with your house. If you are able to, then uh, consider getting renter's insurance. Uh, a lot of places will require it anyways, um, but it'll give you peace of mind and it usually isn't outrageously expensive like other types of insurance. So that wraps up today's episode of Real World Basics. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this week's video. And continuing on the topic of independence, we are going to talk about something that I think is on a lot of the minds of individuals as soon as they move out, 
getting a pet. It was for sure the first thing that I did when I moved out. So join me next week where we will start with our wonderful feline friends in adopting a cat. See you guys next week. Bye.